Welcome back to Feather Your Nest, Part 2. The last time we were together, we covered quite a few things, including how to make a balloon properly and different ways to get up and down your spine and different shapes. We covered a lot last time, so let's review for a few minutes. I know a lot of you folks are watching these videos and aren't taking advantage of our Machine Quilting Tutorials group on Facebook. In this group, we not only have the videos that you're watching, but we also have workbooks that give you muscle memory sheets to practice with and things like that. We also have our students submitting photos of what they've done, asking what they needed to do to repair or to improve. So let's go over those problem areas together. And I'm going to be like a real teacher and get out my red pen so I can show you how easily these problem areas can be fixed by drawing over top of the student's work. Here's one of the homework assignments that was turned into the group. And although the first plume at the bottom was a really nice shape, the student lost sight of where she was to go from there. She lost sight of the 45 degree angle. And by the time she got to the top of her feather, it was totally flat, making her feather look totally flat. So that angle is very important when you're stitching out your feathers. In this next example, the student has turned in very nice plump full feathers. And you can see the feathers on the right side are very nice. One of the problems that everybody seems to be talking about having is when they come down to do the left hand side. They are experiencing problems. And I hope that you can tell by looking at it where the problem is. Once again, it's that dreaded 45 degree angle. It was fine on the right side, but the student lost it on the left side. Another small, very small improvement could be made by nestling that cherry on top feather down in between the other two top feathers. When I look at this feather, I automatically think, my, they must be a perfectionist. Look how perfect their feathers line up from side to side. And the sizes of the feather plumes are pretty much the same on both sides. But unfortunately on both sides, there is no 45 degree angle, which makes the feather look flat. And another thing, don't try to match up the feather to feather. That's not how it's done in nature. Just let them slide into the spine the way they do and they'll be fine. This is working way too hard. Not a member of our Facebook group? This is what you're missing out on. Here's one of our students who is totally obsessed with making feathers, so much so then when making pancakes for her family, she took the pancake batter and made a feather. And if that wasn't enough, she turned it over to show us the other side. Now that's true dedication to learning if I've ever seen it. So in summary, just like in piecing your quilts and having to be precise with your angles and things like that so it all fits together, Freemason quilting is the same way to make your feathers really look good. Don't forget that 45 degree angle. That seems to be the biggest downfall. We've come to the conclusion that the 45 degree angle is the culprit. So how do we fix that? And, and where are we going wrong? Most of you start out and you do that first plume so very nicely. I'm very proud of you. And then we start to do the next plume and this is where it starts to go off. 
we backtrack along that first plume on the top, we come around the sun, and we go back home again. We go around the top of the plume before it, come back in, and back in again around the sun, back home again, around the sun, back home again. Do you see what's happening? You're basically being forced to take the angle of each progressive feather from the, from the feather before it. For example, on this one we come in and we were almost at a 45 degree angle. But as we started coming back home again and not closing up our feather to a point, we start losing that angle until we're still doing something straight across instead of at an angle. So basically, you're, take, you're borrowing the angle from the plume before it. Let me show you again what I mean. So there's our spine. We do the first plume and we bring it to a point. Now if we continue on in that manner we will always have that 45 degree angle. Let me show you why. We're going to go back up that plume, come back in, and back to a point again. Come up, back down to a point again. Come up. Do you see how that's forcing your feather to stay at an angle by forcing your plume to go to a point again. Now you're having a consistent 45 degree angle all the way to the top. So the secret behind maintaining the angle is maintaining your points. Once you get that, you'll have it made. I hope that helped you. Welcome back to Feather Your Nest, part two. I want to go over a few things from last week that I noticed when people were turning in their photos of what they're working on. A couple of the problem areas that I hope I can help you to overcome so that you're happier with your feathers. The, the one thing that I noticed was we do the bird wing, which is a curved, and then it goes around the sun. And when they come back around the sun, they feel like they have to curve again. And that produces a, a strange type of feather that we don't want. So when we're doing that, let's do it on the other side. We're going to do the feather and smoothly come back so that we don't have any lumps or bumps at all in that part of the feather. It's only the underside of the plume that gets the curve. Another thing that I noticed was they get this part right, but then they come in like that. So we've got this big gap here on the stem. Now let me show you how to do it correctly on the other side. Let's come back down. We're going to go around the sun, come back at a 45 degree angle to a point. Let me show you that again. We're going to come up, 
go around the sun, come back to the stem at a point. Those seem to be the hardest two parts uh, that folks were having as far as making the feathers. So hopefully that helps you a little bit and we're ready to move on. Uh, another thing that I noticed that was really hard, and it is, it's hard for everybody, <clears throat> and that was the backtracking. So for example, if we were doing this feather here, in the traditional way, we'd backtrack along the top and then come down. And that's a problem that a lot of folks have trouble with. So let me show you a couple ways where you don't have to do any backtracking at all. Yay! And we'll start up here. Okay, let's turn this this way. And we'll make a fairly long stem. And I think we've moved along enough now that we can do a curved stem. Just to make it a little extra special. Now before we go any further, let me cut this off because I got ahead of myself. Let's go down here again. And if you did any of the back to the basic lessons, this is one of the things that you learned during one of those lessons, and it was called the hook. And it was just a hook. And it could curl under more, depended on how you wanted to do it. But then you would have to backtrack along that hook to get back to the beginning. That's kind of hard. So instead, let's do a hook, but we're going to do it <clears throat> a little bit easier without any backtracking. So let's come back to the stem that we already stitched. And let's make that hook. And let's stop right here. Cut my thread out of the way. And now let's come back. But let's come back like we were doing a regular feather, you know, around the sun and back again. So around the sun and back again. No backtracking. Let's do the same on the other side. Let's make the hook. Around the sun. And no backtracking. Now when we do the next feather or hook, we're going to move up the stem just a little bit. We're going to do the hook and come down and touch the hook before it. And around the sun and back. Move it here, do the hook, touch the one before it, around the sun and back again. Stay on this side, I'll do another one. Now what if you did that and you, you really meant to do a shallower hook? That's not a problem. We've touched that and now we're just going to come up here and come in. There's, there's, there's no way to mess these feathers up. This is pretty forgiving. So let's go up here a little bit. Always touch the one before it. And you can make them short. Or you can make them long. We're going to taper them off a little bit as we get closer to the top. Just like we would a normal feather. And 
pick up on this one. Just do a cherry on the top with a little fancy hook. And we can backtrack down the stem if you'd like to. And that's the only backtracking that we did on the whole feather was just the stem. You ready to learn another one? Okay, let's do the same thing. Start up here. We're going to do a slightly curved stem. Now, if you recall, when we did the bump back feathers, instead of backtracking along this area, we backtracked instead along the hump of the feather. Now I'm going to show you how to do something similar to that but without any backtracking. So let's get our first feather plume in. Okay, then we would go up the, the stem just a little bit. And then we would come up, and we would touch this. Now, normally at this time, that's when we would be backtracking along this line. But instead, we're going to come in halfway, do a little hook, come back out again, and come back down to the stem. Let me come down here and do it on the other side. We've got a regular feather. And then we get our bump back feather, but instead of going around, we're going to curve down to the center, curve back up, around the sun, and back again. Let's do this on the other side. Curve into the center, curve back out around the sun, and back again. Bump the one before it, curve into the center, curve back out, and around the sun back home again. Let's do another one on the side. Go around. Touch the one before it. Curve halfway down and then around the sun and back home again. Touch. Curve halfway down around the sun, and back on the bottom. Let's do another one. Touch the one before, curve halfway, around the sun, and back on the bottom. And we'll do one more. Curve in, around the sun, and back up. And there's another feather you can do. Some people call this a penguin feather because this resembles a penguin by itself. You kind of get that. like so. It kind of looks a little bit like a, a penguin. But when you look at it this way, when you're all done with it, it almost looks like a series of ribbons. 
doesn't it? So there's two ribbons that you can do that you don't have to do any backtracking on at all. So we've learned what not to do. We've learned how to make a hook. We've learned how to make the penguin feather. Let's try some different elements. Also back in our Back to the basics lessons, you might remember that I taught you how to stitch a leaf, right? Get that thread out of there so you can see what we're doing. Now this is a skinnier leaf than what we did in Back to the Basics, but nonetheless it's a leaf of the stem. The one that we did in Back to the Basics was fuller, but this is the type that we want to do for this lesson. So it's just basically an S-curve, another S-curve, and a vein. Okay, so now that we have that in our repertoire, practice on that until you get a feel for it. Let's do another type of feather. We're going to put together a lot of the elements that you've learned so far. So we're going to start first with a quill, but we're going to get the quill to be a little fancy. And we're going to do that by doing a loop back up, and we'll come back down the center. Okay, first we're going to start with our normal plume. Now, let's do one of those leaves. Now let's do a hook. But when we come back this hook, let's do another hook on top of it. Bring in there. Let's do a bump back, bring in there. Now let's do one of those. Oh, plumes. another just a hook and we'll stop here and do another hook now let's come down this stem until it meets up with the one before it. Now let's do the same thing on this side. Let's vary the different shapes. So we can start out with a hook. Now remember, if you have a hard time backtracking on these hooks, so let me do another larger one. That's not a problem. Just make it look like you're deliberately making a ribbon. Now it's kind of 
got a lot of room in between here, so let's put something in there, like maybe just another little hook. Just so we don't have a big gap. Now let's come up here and maybe do a couple of plumes. And maybe let's do a leaf. Feathers. And maybe we'll throw in one of those penguin feathers. And we'll do a cherry on the top. And we get down here, let's feather up this one a little bit more, make it a little fancier. So as you can see, it doesn't have to be straight plumes all the way up. You can just throw in some leaves, you can throw in some hooks, you can throw in some ribbons, you can throw in some penguin type feathers. There's, there's no end to what you can do with feathers and that's what makes them special. The whole thing that makes this feather though, the thing that makes it most appealing is that center curve on the spine. That's what makes it really pop out. We've got so much more to come, so join us for part three of Feather Your Nest. Until then, don't forget to post your progress. That's how we all learn. Bye now.